Who are we, dear Lord, that we are to see your hand at work in our midst? Who are we, dear Lord, that you have called us to proclaim the final message to the human race? Dear Lord, we humble ourselves before your presence, for we are weak and sinful, prone to err, Lord, and to insult your name. Father, forgive us because many of us did not believe that you were going to do this. Forgive us, Father, because many of us were scared, dear Lord, and were talking, Father, and creating this union. Forgive us, dear Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I pray, dear Lord, that you will exalt your name through us. I pray, dear Lord, that uh, the whole of Australia and the South Pacific will know about Jesus and his soon return through the ministry, Lord, that you are leading us to do. May no man be exalted through this, Father. May no human being take honor and glory. But, Lord, may your name be exalted and glorified forever. And may the name of Jesus ring through the ears of all people here in Australia and through the South Pacific so that when Jesus returns, there will be thousands upon thousands of people who will be ready waiting for him thanks to the work you are doing through us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I think I could finish now. Sit down. <laughs> That's a sermon in itself. <laughs> Amen? <clears throat> Open your books in the book of uh, Job. Now, did you, did you see our brand new lectern? You can't even see it. The deacon came to, uh, to me this morning and said, are you going to need a lectern? I said, it's already there. I said, oh, yeah, I haven't seen it. It's, all, it's here, you see. It's nice and clear. So, um, for those who preach, they, you can't shake your knees anymore because everyone will see it. Come to the book of Job. No, not Job, Joel. Joel. I've been studying, uh, studying the book of Joel this week. And it has made a deep impression in my mind. And I'd like to share some of my some of what the Lord has impressed my mind with as I've looked into the book of Joel. Now, the book of Joel is a very interesting book. The name Joel means Yahweh is my God. And the very name sets the context for the book. When you read the book, you will find that Joel never tell us in what era of Israel's history he ministered. We do not have a historical context for the book of Joel. Joel writes his name. He tells us the name of his father, Pethuel, and that's all we know about Joel. Joel is never again mentioned in the whole of the book. We only know that someone named Joel, who was a prophet, wrote this book, and out of that, we have nothing else, no more information. We do not know under what kings he ministered. We do not know what was the situation of Israel or Judah in the days he ministers. We know nothing. And at first, you begin to wonder and say, well, why did he write the book? But when you read the book, you will find that the book of Joel was not written for Israel or Judah. The book of Joel was written for the last days. The book of Joel is a message for those who are living in the last very minutes of human history. The book of Joel has only three chapters. Chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. Chapter 1 presents the attack of an army, foreign army, against the land, Israel. Chapter 2 presents the attack of another army against the land. And then it presents the reaction of God's people, the inhabitants of the land, towards the second attack. And then it presents what God will do for His people in order to prepare them for this second army. 
And finally, Joel chapter 3, show us what will do God do in the last days to judge the nations. It's a final days message. And this morning I'd like us to study it because it has amazing connotations for you and for me. Chapter 1 of Joel begins saying the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days? Or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it has been cut off from your mouth, for a nation has come up against my land, strong and without number. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the fangs of a fish lion. He has laid waste my vine and ruined my fig tree. He has stripped it bare and throw it, thrown it away. Its branches are made white. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of, your, of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering have been cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest mourn who ministers to the Lord. The field is wasted. The land mourns. The grain is ruined. The new wine is dried up. The oil fails. Be ashamed, you farmers, while you vine dressers for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. The vine has dried up and the fig tree has withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the palm and the apple tree. All the trees of the field are withered. Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lament, you priests. Well, you who minister before the altar, come lie all night in sackcloth, you who minister to my God, for the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a distraction from the Almighty. Is not the food cut off before your eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed shrivels under the clods. Storehouses are in shambles. Bands are broken down, for the grain has withered. How the animals groan, the herds of cattle are restless, because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of the sheep, sheep suffer punishment. O oh Lord, to you I cry out. For fire has devoured the open pastures, and a flame has burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field also cry out to you, for the water brooks are dried up, and fire has devoured the open pastures. When you read that first chapter, immediately grabs your attention that there is a sense of imminent danger and urgency to the message of Joel, isn't it? There is an army that Joel says that will attack the land. And in the words of Joel chapter 1 verse 4, this army is described. It says in verse 4, what the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. The symbolic imagery of this chapter is presenting a, a locust <laughs> 